Hello. Here you will learn how to develop an aggregate plan for a company using the linear programming technique by solving an example. The work presented here is based on Chapter 11 of the Operations Management book written by William Stevenson and published by McGraw-Hill. Let us quickly review the definition and the goal of aggregate planning. Aggregate planning is intermediate range capacity planning that typically covers a time horizon of 2 to 12 months. It helps in decision making related to general levels of employment, output, and inventories. While the goal of aggregate planning is to achieve a production plan that will effectively utilize the organization's resources to match expected demand. Before explaining the linear programming method, if you did not do yet, subscribe and activate the alarm to be notified of the new videos. In general, linear programming models are methods for obtaining optimal solutions to problems involving the allocation of scarce resources in terms of cost minimization or profit maximization. With aggregate planning, the goal is usually to minimize the sum of costs related to regular labor time, overtime, subcontracting, carrying inventory, and costs associated with changing the size of the workforce. Constraints involve the capacities of the workforce, inventories, and subcontracting. The problem can be formulated as a transportation-type programming model as a way to obtain aggregate plans that would match capacities with demand requirements and minimize costs. This table shows the notation and setup of a transportation table. These columns detail how the demand for each period will be fulfilled and the last row shows the forecasted demand for each period. While in this column the unused capacity is illustrated to satisfy the requirement of linear programming, that is, capacity and demand be equal. Since it does not cost anything extra to not use capacity in this case, cell costs of zero have been assigned. The cells of the last column illustrate the total capacity of each period. Let us now practice the construction of aggregate planning using the transportation type programming model by solving an example. Given this information set up the problem in a transportation table and solve for the minimum cost plan. The information includes the demand for three periods. 550 units for the first period. 700 units for the second and 750 units for the third one. While the capacity is 500 units during the regular time for each period, 50 units during the overtime and by the subcontractor are 120, 120, and 100 units for periods 1, 2, and 3 respectively. It is given that the beginning inventory is 100 units. The given costs are 60 US dollars for production of one unit during the regular time, 80 US dollars for production of one unit during overtime, 90 US dollars for production of one unit by the subcontractor. While the cost of carrying one unit in inventory is 1 US dollar per period and the back order cost is 3 US dollars per unit per period. To solve this problem, we have to fill in this table in four steps. The first step is to write down the demand of each period in the last row from the given information. The demand for the first period is 550, for the second it is 700 and for the third one, it is 750. The second step is to fill in the last column that contains the maximum capacity for each period. The beginning inventory is 100. For the first period, it is given that the number of products during the regular time is 500 units, 50 units during the overtime, and 120 by the subcontractor. The same is for the second period 500, 50, and 120. Period 3 is the same except the number of units to be supplied by the subcontractor, is only 100. After that, we have to do step number 3 where we have to calculate the cost of producing one unit by different resources for each period after that write this cost in the upper right hand corner of each cell. Knowing that the carrying cost of one unit per period is one US dollar. For the beginning inventory, if it is consumed i.e., delivered in the first period so there is no carrying cost or the cost is zero, if it is kept in store to be consumed in the second period the cost is 1 US dollar while if it is delivered in the third period the cost will be 2 US dollar. We know that producing one unit at the regular time is 60 US dollars. For the first period if the item is produced and delivered in the same period its cost is 60 US dollars, 
while if it is produced in period 1 and delivered in period 2, that is mean stored for one period the cost is 60 plus 1 equals 61 US dollars. And if the item is produced in period 1 and delivered in period 3, that means stored for two periods the cost is 60 plus 1 multiplied by 2 equals 62 US dollars. The same for the overtime, we know that producing one item in overtime costs 80 US dollars. So, if an item is produced during the overtime in the first period and delivered in the same period it costs 80 dollars. While if it is produced in period 1 and delivered in period 2, that is mean stored for one period the cost is 80 plus 1 equal 81 dollars. And if the item is produced in period 1 and delivered in period 3, that means stored for two periods the cost is 80 plus 1 multiplied by 2 equals 82 dollars. Producing one item by subcontractor costs $90. So, if an item is produced by the subcontractor in the first period and delivered in the same period it costs $90. While if it is produced in period 1 and delivered in period 2, that is mean stored for one period the cost is 90 plus 1 equal $91. And if the item is produced in period 1 and delivered in period 3, that means stored for two periods the cost is 90 plus 1 multiplied by 2 equal $92. For the second period, if an item is produced in the second period and used to satisfy an order from the first period, that means back order, the cost is the cost of production during the regular time plus the cost of back order, that is 60 plus 3 equal $63. While if the item is produced in period 2 and delivered in the same period the cost is only $60. And if the item is produced in period 2 and delivered in period 3 that means storing the item for one period the cost is 60 plus 1 equal $61. The same for the overtime cost. If an item is produced in the second period during the overtime and used to satisfy an order from the first period, that means back order. The cost is the cost of production during the overtime plus the cost of back order, that is 80 plus 3 equal $83. While if the item is produced in period 2 and delivered in the same period the cost is only $80. And if the item is produced in period 2 and delivered in period 3 that means storing the item for one period the cost is 80 plus 1 equal $81. The same principle is applied to producing an item by the subcontractor. If an item is produced in the second period by the subcontractor and used to satisfy an order from the first period, that means back order, the cost is the cost of production by the subcontractor plus the cost of back order, that is 90 plus 3 equal $93. While if the item is produced in period 2 and delivered in the same period the cost is only $90. And if the item is produced in period 2 and delivered in period 3 that means storing the item for one period the cost is 90 plus 1 equal $91. In the same way, we can calculate the cost of production in period 3. If an item is produced in the third period and used to satisfy an order from the first period, that means back order for two periods, its cost is the cost of production during the regular time plus the cost of back order for two periods that is 60 plus 3 multiplied by 2 equals 66 dollars. While if the item is produced in period 3 and used to satisfy an order from period 2, its cost is the cost of production during the regular time plus the cost of back order which is 60 plus 3 equals 63 dollars. And if the item is produced in period 3 and delivered in the same period, the cost is only 60 dollars. The same for the overtime cost. If an item is produced in the third period during the overtime and used to satisfy an order from the first period, that means back order for two periods, its cost is the cost of production during the overtime plus the cost of back order for two periods, that is 80 plus 3 multiplied by 2 equal $86. While if the item is produced in period 3 and used to satisfy an order from period 2, that means back order for one period. Its cost is the cost of production during the overtime plus the cost of back order for one period, that is 80 plus 3 equal $83. And if the item is produced in period 3 and delivered in the same period, the cost is only $80. The same principle is applied to producing an item by the subcontractor. If an item is produced in the third period by the subcontractor and used to satisfy an order from the first period, that means back order for two periods 
the cost is the cost of production by the subcontractor plus the cost of back order for two periods, that is 90 plus 3 multiplied by 2 equal $96. While if the item is produced in period 3 and used to satisfy an order from the second period, that means back order for one period, the cost is the cost of production by the subcontractor plus the cost of back order for one period, that is 90 plus 3 equal $93. And if the item is produced in period 3 and delivered in the same period, the cost is only $90. Since the unused capacity does not cost anything, in this case, Sell costs of zero have been assigned. Note the systematic way that costs change as you move across a row from left to right. Regular cost, overtime cost, and subcontracting cost are at their lowest when the output is consumed or delivered in the same period it is produced, at the intersection of period 1 row and column for regular cost, at the intersection of period 2 row and column for regular cost, and so on. If goods are made available in one period but carried over to later periods, i.e., moving across a row, carrying or holding costs are added whether or not the goods came from regular production, overtime, or subcontracting. Conversely, with back orders, the unit cost increases as you move across a row from right to left, beginning at the intersection of a row and column for the same period. For instance, if some goods are produced in period 3 to satisfy back orders from period 2, a unit back order cost is added. And if goods in period 3 are used to satisfy back orders two periods earlier, example from period 1, a unit cost of two periods is added. Once we finished the cost, we can go for the last step to assign the used capacity for each period bearing in mind the minimum cost. Let us start with period 1, the demand of this period is 550 units to be satisfied by the available capacity with minimum cost. In this column representing period 1, the minimum cost is the cost of the beginning inventory that is zero, the maximum capacity of this is 100 units, so, use them all. Only 100 of the demand are satisfied we still need 450 to satisfy the 550 demand of period 1. Looking for the next lowest cost, here it is, the cost of regular production of $60, the total capacity of this is 500 items, so, we can use 450 of them to complete the 550 units demand of period 1. Moving to the second period, its demand is 700 units. The minimum cost in this period is the cost of the beginning inventory of $1 but we used all the 100 items in period 1 so moving to the next lower cost. It is the cost of regular production at $60. The maximum capacity of regular production in this period is 500 units, so, use them all. We still need 200 units to satisfy the 700 unit demand. Looking for the next lower cost, it is for the regular production in period 1 at $61. The total capacity of regular production during period 1 is 500, 450 units of them used in that period. So, we can use the remaining 50. 550 units of 700 units are satisfied, so we still need to assign 150 units. In the same column, what is the next lower cost? It is $80, the cost of overtime production in period 2 with a maximum capacity of 50 units, use all of them. So, the remaining required items are 100 items. The next lower cost is $81. The cost of overtime production in period 1 with a maximum capacity of 50 units, use all of them. Well, now we assign 650's unit of the 700 unit demand of period 2. To satisfy the remaining 50 unit, find the next lower cost. It is $90, the cost of production by a subcontractor with capacity 120. So, we can use 50 of them to complete the 700 unit demand for period 2. Moving to the third period, the forecasted demand is 750 units. The minimum cost in this period is the cost of the beginning inventory of $2 but we used all the 100 items in period 1 so moving to the next lower cost. It is the cost of regular production at $60. The maximum capacity of regular production in this period is 500 units, so, use them all. 
we still need 250 units to satisfy the 750 unit demand. In the same column, the next lower costs are $61 and $62 assigned for the regular production in the first two periods but their capacity was already used. The next lower cost is $80, the cost of overtime production in period 3 with a maximum capacity of 50 units, use all of them. So, the remaining required items are 200 items. To satisfy the remaining 200 units, find the next lower cost. It is $90, the cost of production by a subcontractor in period 3 with capacity 100. So, use all of them to reduce the remaining items to 100. Looking for the next lower cost, it is $91, the cost of production by a subcontractor in period 2 with capacity 120, 50 of them already used. So, we can use the remaining 70. We still need 30 more items. The next lower cost is $92, the cost of production by a subcontractor in period 1 with a capacity of 120. Use 30 of them and the remaining 90 are unused. Adding up the used capacity assigned for period 3. 30 plus 70 plus 500 plus 50 plus 100 equals 750 unit equal the estimated demand for this period. Right now, we finished filling in the table and we can calculate the cost of each period and the total cost for this plan. The cost of the first period equals 100 multiplied by 0 plus 450 multiplied by 60 equal $27,000. The cost of the second period equals 50 multiplied by 61 plus 50 multiplied by 81 plus 500 multiplied by 60 plus 50 multiplied by 80 plus 50 multiplied by 90 equal $45,600. While the cost of the third period equals 30 multiplied by 92 plus 70 multiplied by 91 plus 500 multiplied by 60 plus 50 multiplied by 80 plus 100 multiplied by 90 equal $52,130. The total cost equals the cost of period 1 plus the cost of period 2 plus the cost of period 3 equals 27,000 plus 45,600 plus 52,130 equals $124,730. Hopefully, you can solve such problems by yourself. If you have any comments or feedback, feel free to contact me. And do not forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the alarm to be notified of the new videos. Goodbye.